This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by NHLiberty.org. NHLiberty.org. Thank you. Give me the space. Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly update for December 24th. The senseless and horrific killings last week in Newtown, Connecticut, reminded us that a determined individual or group of individuals can cause great harm no matter what laws are in place. Connecticut already has restrictive gun laws relative to other states including restrictions on fully automatic so-called assault rifles and gun-free zones. I don't have any more time. That's it. My time is up. You think that it would harm you to answer my questions? This interview is over. Would you you please dismantle your cameras? Predictably, the political left responded to the tragedy with emotional calls for increased gun control. This is understandable but misguided. The impulse to have government do something to protect us in the wake of national tragedies is reflexive and often well-intentioned. Many Americans believe that if we simply pass the right laws, future horrors like Sandy Hook Elementary shooting can be prevented. But this impulse ignores the self-evident truth that criminals don't obey laws. The political right, unfortunately, has fallen into the same trap in its calls for quick legislative solutions to gun violence. If only we put armed police or armed teachers in schools, we're told would be school shooters would be dissuaded or stopped. While I certainly agree that more guns equal less crime and that private gun ownership prevents many shootings, I don't agree that conservatives and libertarians should view government legislation, especially at the federal level, as the solution to violence. Real change can happen only when we commit ourselves to rebuilding civil society in America, meaning a social society based on family, religion, civic, and social institutions, and peaceful cooperation through markets. We cannot reverse decades of moral and intellectual decline by snapping our fingers and passing laws. Let's not forget that our own government policies often undermine civil society, cheapen life, and encourage immorality. The president and other government officials denounce school violence, yet still advocate for endless undeclared wars abroad and easy abortion at home. U.S. drone strikes kill thousands, but nobody in America holds vigils or devotes much news coverage to those victims, many of which are children, albeit of a different color. Obviously, I don't want to conflate complex issues of foreign policy and war with Sandy Hook shooting, but it is important to make the broader point that our federal government has zero moral authority to legislate against violence. Furthermore, do we really want to live in a world of police checkpoints, surveillance cameras, metal detectors, x-ray scanners, and warrantless physical searches? We see this culture in our airport. Witness the shabby spectacle of once proud, happy Americans shuffling through long lines while uniformed TS agents bark orders. This is the world of government-provided security, a world far too many Americans now seem to accept, even endorse. School shootings, no matter how horrific, do not justify creating an Orwellian surveillance state in America. Do we really believe government can provide total security? Do we want to involuntarily commit every disaffected, disturbed, or alienated person who fantasizes about violence? Or can we accept that liberty is more important than the illusion of state-provided security? Government cannot create a world without risk, nor would we really wish to live in such a fictional place. Only a totalitarian society would even claim absolute safety as a worthy ideal because it would require total state control over its citizens' lives. We shouldn't settle for substituting one type of violence for another one. Government's role is to protect liberty, not to pursue unobtainable safety. Our freedoms as Americans preceded gun control laws, the TSA or the Department of Homeland Security. Freedom is defined by the ability of citizens to live without a government interference, not by safety. It is easy to clamor for government security when terrible things happen, but liberty is given true meaning when we support it without exceptions, and we will be safer for it. Thanks for calling this update. A new update is placed on this number, 888-322-1414 every Monday. The written text can be found on my website, www.house.gov slash Paul, under the heading, Texas Straight Talk. This edition of the Ridley Report was brought to you by...
the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance at nhliberty.org. If you were to go to the State House and do this, then you would step on the toes of a Liberty Alliance member because they're all over the place at the State House. They are there fighting for your freedom and they need your help. Visit the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance at nhliberty.org and join them. Or maybe I should say, join us because I am a member. nhliberty.org By the way, if you haven't moved to New Hampshire yet, this is just another glimpse of what you're missing.